Hi guys, we all know I love my Audi TT RS, but what would be the natural progression for me to go to? Now it would be this, the 718 Cayman GT4, but what are the differences? <laughs> Audi's beloved five-cylinder engine gives us 400 brake horsepower and 480 newton meters of torque. Mixed with a seven-speed S-Tronic gearbox, we get a 0 to 6 time of 3.7 seconds. The Cayman gives us 420 brake horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque from a flat six engine. Now this will give us a 0 to 6 time of 4.4 seconds because we have a manual gearbox. It's also mid-engined and rear-wheel drive. The TTRS weighs 1.5 tonnes compared to 1.4 of the Porsche, but it does have the Quattro system. Now, in terms of price, we're looking at about £65,000 for a 2022 Audi TTRS compared to about 78 dollars base spec for the Cayman GT4. Now, this one with us today does have things like the Club Sport package, putting the price up to £97,000. Is it worth that jump, though? And when it comes to brakes, we have eight put on the front of the Audi and six put on the Cayman. But bigger does not always mean better. Both cars have luxury and sporty written all over it, with things like the Audi R8 steering wheel in the TT, but it's a little bit more refined, especially with the S-Tronic gearbox. Now, when we head over to the Porsche, you have a little bit more of a track-focused feel with things like bucket seats, roll cage, but don't worry, there's still some modern day comforts there. So let's head out in the Audi first. Both the Audi and the Porsche are sporty coupes made in Germany, so you have that quality there as expected. But yet they're so different. The Audi system isn't as simple as sport or comfort. Now we do have a comfort mode. We then have individual, auto or dynamic, which is the best one. So gearbox goes into sport and it even sends more power to the rear. Now the Audi does have two rear seats, although they may be questionable, but you can fit things like storage for bags or maybe some kids maybe an adult if you really tried and the boot itself is actually a really reasonable size especially when you do put the seats down you have lots of room that you can fit things like suitcases or your week shopping in and even enough room for one backer the audi is obviously based from the standard tt which you can get in diesel petrol whatever you want so what Audi have done is added the RS and added the performance, which you can notice a difference on, things like the brakes at Cadwell. But when you're looking at the Porsche, it is a performance race car that's then put on the road. So you can notice a difference there, which again, justifies the price increase. With the RS TT, you do get a fixed wing, although it doesn't particularly do a lot, but it does look quite sexy. Now, the car itself is really planted on the road. The Quattro system works absolute wonders, especially with launch control. The power delivery is so instant with that high torque, but then it misses out on things like the manual shifting and rear wheel drive. You still get things like the luxuries of a digital display, heated seats, air con, sat nav, etc. in both cars. Now, Audi decided to have one screen right in front of you with everything on it, which personally I quite like because it frees up a lot of space. Whereas Porsche has gone for the traditional three dials in the middle and just screen there. You do get the super sport seats in the TT as standard and they are super comfortable as well as easier to get in and out of. The durability of the ride, especially in comfort, is super smooth. It's so soft against the road. Now, obviously when we put it into dynamic, it does stiffen up and it handles really well with that but it doesn't soak up the bumps as well. But it's still manageable. The one downside with the TT that I find is the noise. I mean, obviously when you're on a comfortable drive, you do want it a little bit quieter, which inside the cab, it is a lot quieter than the Porsche. But even when you are putting the exhaust into sport, it has a little bit of a grunt, but until you're really pushing it, it's quite quiet. Whereas the Porsche is constantly there to remind you the engine's there and waiting. And you'd think being an Audi, being a more practical car, You'd have more than one cup holder. Heading over to the GT4, first things first, you get not one, but two cup holders. Perfect for McFlurries.
as well as incredible brakes that did not fail the entire time around Brands Hatch. The Porsche systems are just fantastic. So you have a Porsche traction management system keeping you in check as much as it can. You've got things like your sport mode where it changes things like the chassis and the control just to make things feel more extreme than what they do already. So like we say, on track it's absolutely perfect. Or so if you're wanting that little bit more of a push on the road, safely and under the speed limit of course, it is possible. And with the driver involvement and the engagement, it means if you want to drive this hard, you have to drive it. The driver really has to put quite a bit into it. And that's what makes it so rewarding. Whereas the Audi, with the automatic and everything, it has a lot that's doing it for you. Which isn't always a bad thing, but this just makes you smile. And the important thing to remember is the GT4 is designed as a race car that is then put on the road. So it's guaranteed to handle well on track. And the rest of it, we make do. And with a mixture of fun and motorway journeys, we got 27.2 mpg. Do you know what? That isn't bad. And don't let this 46 mpg of the Audi fool you. On a day-to-day -day living, we get around the late 20s. And even though it is rear-wheel drive, this thing will hunker down and pin you forwards. Pin you backwards. Damn it. We all know this car isn't necessarily built for the quickest of lap times and that does follow through onto the road because it's all about fun and involvement which yes we saw at Brands Hatch but on a spirited drive as well you have a lot of fun. Now we're cruising on the motorway it is really easy to live with we've popped it into sixth gear although there is a little bit of engine noise I am not complaining by that. The seats although difficult to get in and out with are super comfortable once you're snuggled in because they really do hold you in place which means I think a long journey in this is actually, you're not gonna have any broken backs. The GT4 is just truly something special. It's like a raw race car that's then put onto the road and it's why it's definitely the next car on my list that I'd love to own. And although both cars are fantastic in their own right, and I do love my Audi TT RS, but for today and one day only, I will be dreaming and taking the GT4. So you guys know the drill to make my journey your journey. Like, follow, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.